so this this process you guys know everyone so i'll just be very quick okay Let's put like let me put everything okay for you guys. So this you guys are doing right. So <clears throat> so this should be plain simple for you guys. OK, so now we'll save this claimant. So I forgot to add this office. OK, so it is done. Oh, no. uh, Whitney was. OK, so now the registration is complete. So now we will map this with the database. So everything starts with parties table. OK, you would have seen in my email, right? So let's open database. So this is the same query which I guess which I sent to you. So whatever is in caps lock. So these are basically master master tables. So if I say party types, so there are basically individual business, uh, then dummy employer, out of state collections, government. So these are the ones okay, which you have in the system. So I'll just pass in the um, SSN number. And since I just queried the parties and I joined with the party types, so this guy, like you know, this claimant who is having this SSN number, and so this is a system generated ID and his type of individual. So because I am like you now I am filing for the claim, I am an individual, so that's why this party type code maps to individual, okay, through party types. And then whatever details I filled in, like you know, my date of birth and uh, like gender uh, i am disabled or not veteran or not so all those details actually goes in here okay this table is a big table okay so so this is first and then i need to know where my name is there okay so i i i gave uh, john mac as my name so let's see uh, so so from here what I need. So from now on, I'll not be using the SSN, but I will be using the party ID for all my references. OK, so I go here. I query this. So there is a name type also. 
because um, so P is primary, A is alias, M is employer, D is DBA. So these sort of names people like it's not only people like you know entities can have or parties can have. So if I join this and then use the so I get John Mac as the name. OK, so the effective date is from now and P means primary. OK. And what else I have been doing? OK, oh, we also have the SSN number here. If you see here, I, what I've done is I basically taken the max out of it. OK, so anytime you actually like the names, uh, you can update your name. So let's say you you had some certain name at your date of birth or you when you actually registered into the system. But later, actually, you edited your name or you changed your name. So then, like you know, what would happen is this PNMH number basically keep increasing, and then uh, so we have to take the latest record. So so that's the reason I I said I want the max PNMH number. But since like you know, in this case, I just have one record, so I could have directly queried. But uh, this is generic query, which will basically give you the latest record. So what is the latest name he has? So any queries till now? OK, so I take that as you guys are understanding. So now, so so I showed I showed you like, you know, what are the details going in here? And then I showed you the name physically, and then we have to show you the mailing address and the residential address. So the address basically we store. So again, we have this address type. So this has this mailing residential. So if you see here, it says mailing residential. You can have other types of address also. OK, and uh, if I query this table, OK, I have to put in the party ID. And then I have this residential and mailing. OK, and then since I selected both address to be same uh, during the registration, so I have all the details here. OK, whatever is coming is shown here is coming from this table, but then this table has some other mappings also like we have your zip code and then we have this country code USA and uh, this is address plus zip. So this address plus zip you did not enter, but then uh, when the Pitney was actually validated the address, so it it is using the US postal um, address for validation. So it is checking like, you know, uh, if that actually matches with the postal uh, address on their end on the actual master list. Uh, so there is a uh, there is a master address list which is maintained by US US Postal Service. So if it matches, so they actually append the address plus chip. OK, so that this address plus chip plus four basically comes from there. And then if you see, we have this office address ID here. I'll show you what is this. And then. Uh, zip code number. OK, this one, the FIPS ID. So there is another table called FIPS, uh, FIPS data. So we'll map from here. To. This basically gives you the state in C that is North Carolina. And then uh, this is uh, county. Like you know, inside like it's like district for us, and then uh, the zip code and the city ID. Um, so basically, if I take the city from here, city ID, um, and then I pass in here. Okay, so I get Mursville, which I gave. Okay, Mursville. Okay, uh, let me. Okay, lock it, and then. Oh, I don't have to log this one. To log this one, and then uh, I have this uh, county code. So if I go and take a look at the county, so this is under uh, Ardell County. Okay, so we didn't select it, but uh, as part of again those Pitney was validation, it actually took from there. Okay, and then I go back to the zip code. So zip code is this. So like there is nothing, but then you can have additional details in here also. So this is how the address basically maps. So we have, as I showed you the first query, 
So this is like residential and milling. So we are showing here milling and residential. OK, then we move into this communication like contact history. OK, so then I pass in the same ID. So everything like, you know, is mapped to party ID. That's like master. So I have here alternate and primary phone number uh, because I selected both in my like, you know, while doing the registration. So if you see here, contact history, so primary phone number is this, alternate is this, which is basically coming from here. Like they have add, added the extension with like, you know, cross. OK, then if I query this table that is party email, I get the email address, which is here. OK. So and then you would have seen during my registration, I actually selected the nearest office, um, which was um, DS office. Uh, yeah, so this is this is the one employer service center. So which is the nearest office? And then uh, I selected this based on the address. OK, so if I and this DLI offices is actually the master office list, which is maintained by North Carolina. OK, so uh, since I selected um, the address which is nearest to my address, so if I pass in the same party ID here. So I'm getting NCDS. OK, so this is the address I selected. And I'm just. Hello. Hey, uh, Nikunja, sorry, I went for uh, lunch. Actually, I came just now. Oh, that's fine. You you know all these things. You are expert, so you, oh, you okay. can drop up also. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll put on mute so this can. Okay. So you guys understood, like you know this. Um, so you guys understood this offices, then phone, the communication address, this address. So any doubts in here? OK, so just say yes if you understood somebody. Yes, OK, yeah. I just want to validate you, you guys did not sleep off. OK. <laughs> yeah, so now I'll go into claim details. Sorry, uh, where is it? Yeah. So now I'll do file UI. Okay. And again, you guys know what needs to be done here. So I say no. And then. Uh, When we are selecting other program as S. Who is that? Other? Hazira. Hazira. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me. So if we are selecting other program as S, yes. so what will be the flow? Like I selected S for uh, while registration, but uh, mm -hmm. I didn't understood uh, how the flow will go. So, so I you... can see all the items. Yeah, so you will come to know. So there are like if you select yes, then like you know you have to go through uh, DOA, like DUA, EB, USC, or TRA. Okay, uh, all railroad retirement. So these are like you know different flavors of the same UI program, but the screen little changes a little, uh, little not much. Okay, um, yeah. and the weekly certification also changes. Okay, we'll come to there. But let's first okay. UI is like you know. 
almost like 80 70 percent is ui always okay so we are we have to first cover the majority part and then we'll go into the specific parts okay so okay, that's okay my goodness. i selected others programmers now sure sure Okay, so I completed this and then I go ahead and save it. Hope I filled in everything. Okay, so now this information is saved. So let's go back and map things to the database. So we covered till here. So now this claim filing again. Everything starts from party. Okay. So we have this claim. So if you see here, uh, as part of this, this claim ID came 9115, okay, which is here, okay. And uh, this CP roll code uh, C means uh, claimant, okay, and uh, like you know B means business, okay. So but I just wanted to show you. So it starts with claim parties, okay, and then I'll go into this 9115, which is the claim. So basically, whatever you you put in here, the details goes into this claims table. OK. Yes, no, all those questions answers. OK, goes in here. Then uh, the status, if you see here, it says incomplete. So we have this claim status. We maintain all the statuses of the claim. OK, so if I put in the claim ID, I put a nine one one five. So now this is I means incomplete, okay, which is you are seeing in the screen, okay. And uh, the more important parts here is OK, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so you have to basically look at this claim file date uh, and the claim effective date and the base period uh, begin and base period end date. So these are basically for you like, you know, these are like you know, important dates which you have to like time and again, you have to come and basically look look over here for these dates. OK, and then this one is the base period start date, base period end date. OK, so these dates actually are more important uh, in this table. OK, so this one is done. OK, now as so we filed the claim. OK, but then the claim is incomplete and then we'll uh, file the separation. OK. So as part of separation, you are mentioning that you, you have been separated from an employer. OK, so that's what it is. So I'm selecting here in North Carolina employment. And I'll search here. And we just have one uh, employer that is Walmart. OK, uh, make a note of this. This employer account number is one, two, three, four, five. OK, and it has uh, address this address uh, Morganton. OK. Morganton Heights, okay. Which you will also see in the below. Um, okay, so this is done, then full time. And uh, so th these things are mattering, like, you know, when you, you said, like, sometimes you say, uh, oh, like, you know, the uh, this uh, weekly certification and details are not coming and all. So you have to basically put correct dates. saying I started in 2020 and then my last date was first okay, officer you're selecting some state no.
okay so now is the main part like you know what, what happens so that means i got discharge fired i'm just selecting this and then i'll say let's put harassment okay and now i save it so this is where i'm actually telling the system that i got laid off from this walmart super center which is at certain address okay if i select this it will uh, populate the details below on so and so date and my employment period was so and so and why i got laid off okay so now let's view this in the database so separating employer so that we have a view we business dba curve okay and then i selected walmart super center so that's what i'm going to select so you see this is the party um, so basically this view again refers to all those um, tables to basically create this view okay so uh, we query the view but then i'll also show you how the data comes in comes in and gets populated into the materialized view so we have this view um, basically it has all the details of the employer okay and then this is the view for the name we don't use it much but I, I just showed it to you okay but then from this view i can take this party id so i said everything starts with party id so earlier the party id which i showed you was basically the claimant party id but now this is the employer party id so that's why i'm going into employer details there is a table to find the details so you would have seen on the screen the employer account number this is important the the way like uh, every uh, business will have a number unique number associated with them so this this field basically correspond to that so we have one two three four five that's what came up in the screen also with appended with two zeros okay um, and then i think uh, rest all remain same like uh, nothing there and then if i query this parties so you see this is i told you everything goes into parties um, because employer itself is a party so it's a business type uh, for the claimant it was individual and if you see this party tax id so employer does not have ssn they have a fein number that's called fin number um, it's like uh, capgemini has some unique identifier number right that uh, you would have seen that those numbers on your payroll so yeah so those sort of numbers so they are unique okay so this party and then if i again is the same tables uh, it's just that i'm using the different uh, party id to query thus again party name history holds all the names even this was the same table which was holding the name for the claimant but now i queried with the employer party id so i have now two so in the system as part of this employer um, like basically employer will have one dba name so this is uh, a a federal name thing like this and then this is the actual name okay so we have it so and then uh, if i query name history i showed you okay address address so this is the address of the employer they have mailing address and i showed you that is it was morganton heights okay and then you can go into those same tables zip code uh, go to fifth data and then from there you can find all the state um, like you know county and all the details okay then i move into separation uh, if i go into screen i see this 9115 okay um, and then i take this so this is the separation okay so it says like you know this is the claimant this is the employer and uh, like you know certain other details like this is a mailing address uh, sorry this this means employer m means employer and then you see this separation id here if i take this separation id that is okay uh, like you can use the separation id altogether i am just querying it again so for separation id i get all these details so it has the same almost same details like employer party id um, and then it will have claimant party id and it has this okay so you 
So this has the start date. So whatever you filled in basically in that screen. So I, I selected what state I worked on. Um, so all those details comes into this separation table. And the important thing here is. Yes, the claimant reason and the quit discharge reason. So this claimant reason and quit discharge region are basically two master table. So we have all these separation reasons here in this table separation reasons. OK, so the first drop down basically lists down everything from here. OK, so the 20 whatever we selected was basically discharge fire and termination from job. And based on this selection, there was a second drop down. It's a subcategory sub drop down got selected and there we selected harassment. So if I select this, so this is harassment. So and this is what is also there in the separation. Like this one is 2009, right? So if I go in here. Uh, OK, so this quit discharge reason is 2009, which is harassment. So we covered uh, till uh, separation. So any questions still here? Slipping. No, Nikinja. OK, so now uh, as after the separation, we'll do the actual filing of the claim. OK, so that time we just filled in the details for the claim. That's the reason the claim is incomplete. Like you know, when we when he actually filled in yes, no, did you work in this? Like most answers were no, basically that time we just filled in those. Now we are actually going and filing the claim. OK, so this process. OK. So now the claim status changed to pending. OK, and we see one issue got created. This is what I was telling the other day, like, you know, this would be the starting point for the adjudication, this issue. But let's map this records into database. OK, so we have separation. OK, and then OK, I have to show you one more thing here. If you see here, every separation basically gets mapped to an issue. Uh, think here. Yes, if you see harassment, if I selected harassment, that means I there is an issue type. So this is basically since I told you all the uh, bold uh, like you know tables are basically master tables. So we have configured if like you know the claimant selects harassment so we have to create a issue type called dc13 i'll tell you what is dc13 but then we have configured like this so that's the reason when we filed the claim okay so i'll take again the claim id so that's that issue got created whatever you are seeing here right this uh, discharge harassment issue got created so i'm going to show you that okay so, but you saw this like, you know, as part of harassment separation reason, we have configured this. So this is a configuration. Now I'm going to show you how it got created. So if you see as part of the claim filing process, that issue which got created as part of the claim of this 9115, which is there in the screen, okay, got associated with both the parties. So this is the table issue claim parties, basically this uh, maps the issue to both the parties. If you see uh, the issue ID is which got created. So basically this issue in the database maps to 9137, but then this has two party. This 9102 is nothing, but 9102 is the claimant. OK, and then the separating employer is 3356. OK, 3356. So basically in this table, issue claim parties, we store, we basically associate it, associate the issue and the claim and the party. OK, so this table, this is one of the most important table. Like, you know, you have to basically query always in this table. And then from here, I can take this issue ID. I can query. Into issues table. 
so as I, as i like you know the, as part of the configuration we said like you know when the user select harassment one dc13 issue has to be created so if you see this is, uh, for this issue this is dc13 and all these de issue details are there which uh, we will come to know about more when we do the adjudication process but then you are anyway going uh, doing adjudication but uh, like you know this is where and the important thing is the issue is pending so you would have gone to the issue list screen where it shows pending. Okay, I'll show you that in the last. Okay, then there is a start date and um, like uh, what that? Uh, I think that's all. Okay, uh, the due date. Okay, detection date. Uh, when is the end date? And then there is an effective date. So in issue, these dates again matter a lot. So this this um, are some some of these are basically system driven and some. The detection date is basically when this issue got detected. That means today. But then the due date is like system calculates based on some configuration. OK, and that I think I was telling you, like, you know, some issue has to be resolved between some time or the work item. I think yesterday I was telling you, right, some work item has to be completed within a certain time. So this date is basically matched to that. Like this issue has to be resolved or somebody has to resolve this issue by this date. OK, it's like hard. Like they have to be hard, um, sort of like they have to, they have to, um, they have to do whatever they have to do within this date. Okay. Then what is this DC 13? Basically, we, this these are again master tables. So the DC 13 is nothing but harassment. So it's a coincidence. It's not coincidence. It's like uh, for this record which I selected. So like you know the separation reason was harassment and the issue type is harassment, but it it. It is not always true. You can have a very generic, um, like you know, statement like your separation reason, but then the issue type would be very specific. Okay, so you can have this. These names will be little more specific. Okay, uh, here like you know, harassment means harassment, so that's the reason we have this. And then every issue basically falls into a category. Okay, so we have different categories. Um, if I select this. So we have this uh, available and available uh, back date. Then there is appeal issues. So basically, a, a bunch of issues grouped together uh, forms a category. So this DC 13. So anything which starts with DC, right? So it has to map to discharge because you got discharged from the employer. So then, like you know, this is part of the discharge group of issues. Okay. So any questions still here? OK, no questions. Fine. Good. Uh, then we'll go into dynamic fact finding. This is nothing but if you see there is a link here. So this means uh, the system basically wants more information from you and then you click in here. OK, this actually opens the OPA. It's a tool that's called Oracle Policy Administrator um, that has all the like, like you know rules for the um, system uh, based on the issue. Um, and these rules are basically these are governed by the state laws. OK, so so they are been configured into that Oracle policy administrator and then whatever questions and answer you provide based on that. Again, you will get certain more questions like they are capturing all the information with that uh, OPA tool. OK. So I'll just answer these questions as in like, you know, you would have seen this same setup, I think, as part of CSS registration, where you get a link saying uh, provide additional information. OK, so. So in, in uh, OPA, that's basically called DFF, that's called dynamic fact finding. Uh, you have like basically two two parts to it. One is called pre fact finding, and then there is something called post fact finding. So right now we are just doing the pre fact finding. Uh, sometimes uh, the pre fact finding is enough for the system to understand, uh, or sometimes like you know the pre fact finding, like you know the the question and the responses which you provide, like you know are not enough, and then the system might give you. Uh, the original fact finding or the like, you know, the post fact finding to basically capture additional information. Like anyway, we are getting additional. That is like additional, additional. Okay. 
So I say, uh, were you told? No, I was not told, like, you know, for discharge. So I'm just putting in some test data, okay? So I'm not changing my decision, so I'll, I'll still put, you can change your decision. Like, you know, if you would have selected their harassment, you can go ahead and select something else. And this system takes precedence over what you have selected in there. Okay, understand that. So even if you would have selected something there as harassment, you can go ahead and change your, like, you know, change your thing here. Uh, but I'm going to stick with that. So uh, where is that? Okay, I was fired from the job. So I'm just selecting the same, whatever I selected. I'm not changing my uh, stance. So I think this, when you see this screen, so that means like, you know, the, the pre fact finding complete because this is the last screen for the pre fact finding. And then based on this, it will decide like, you know, okay, does it require additional information or not? Okay, and since uh, okay, I'll submit it from here. So this fact find, so this pre fact finding is complete. So let's see if my information is enough for the system. Okay, I don't think so. Okay, so no. So now the actual fact finding is coming up where it's asked like you know who's the who's the guy who fired you? Okay, who was? So I'm just putting something. And uh, then uh, what shift you worked on or how many days you worked there? So, and what time, like, you know, you worked there? And I worked all five days. This is like just uh, capturing the information. This system. Okay. 40 hours and then $10 per hour. I, I was being paid. So was your last date? Yes, that's my last date. Okay, that's the date I got discharged. Uh, what is your position? Okay, that's fine. Okay, what was your harassment type? Uh, discrimination. So based on the responses, the system is trying to find like it is enough or like it has to show you more. Are you willing to provide specific names and relation? No. So when the actual claimant fills in, he won't fill in test. Okay, you'll be filling in the actual values. Normally, if you select no, like you know, this one finishes, but for this, like you know, I think. 
I selected something wrong. So it keep asking me all these questions. Okay, no, he didn't end up. Okay, fine. Done. So now the fact finding from the Clement side is complete. Okay, um, because you saw this link as part of this issue, and then I went ahead and completed it. Okay. So the claim was successfully filed, and the confirmation number is nine one four five. Okay. Okay. So everything is done for this. Okay. So let's see the fact finding and map it to the database table. Okay. Um, so dynamic fact finding, as I said, there is a configuration table. So as part of this table, we configure what uh, what are the fact findings are required, uh, and these are mapped to the issue type. So since we created issue type of DC thirteen, that is discharge harassment. So if there is any fact finding related to this, is configured here. And if you see, there are like two fact findings. One is for employer, Clement, that CLM stands for Clement and e EMP stands for employer. But this is not the way like, you know, to find out there are other tables which you can join to find uh, which is for Clement and which is for employer. But I don't want to go into that. Uh, okay, I won't finish then within one hour. So I'm just showing you here. So this, so this fact finding, this rule basically is applicable for Clement, which we completed. And this rule is applicable for employer, which employer has to complete from ESS portal. Okay. I, I could have completed this same stuff from CSS. Okay. But uh, CSS and the benefits basically same. Uh, it's just two sides of a coin. And then CSS is a very small part of the actual benefits application. Okay. So I, I found as part of this, there are two configuration. And then as part of the configuration, you saw the link, the Clement link. I went and completed it. And then since I told you every issue, uh, like you know, if these fact findings are related to the issue type, that means the actual fact findings should be related to the issue. Okay, so what was the issue ID? The issue ID is 9137. So let's see what are the fact findings. So there are two fact findings created and one was issued to the employer. If you see, this is the employer party ID. Okay, see, this is the employer. 356, 356, and 9102 was the Clement. So 9102. So one uh, one fact finding uh, was issued to Clement, another fact finding was issued to employer. But I went ahead and completed the fact finding for the Clement. So that's why you see this completed indicator. Okay. And as part of the fact finding, if I would have changed my like you know decision in there, um, this this like issue type could have changed, but then since I selected the same harassment, so this DC 13 was also mapping to harassment. So this this basically remains same. But then if I would have selected something in there, so the system would have found like, you know, OK, for that reason, what is the issue type? And then it would, it would have basically put in the issue type here. OK, and uh, the, uh, from here, like from the configuration, the OPA configuration to this is basically mapped through the rule ID. OK. So this is what is the fact finding, but then where are the answers? Where are the questions and where are the answers? OK, so those will be in the fact finding XML. OK, so if I take this fact finding ID and I go into the fact finding section and I pass in because this one is the one which I completed. OK. So I have this two. So one was pre fact finding, as I told you, like where I where the system told, okay, thank you, in like you know for providing all the information. Then I clicked submit, and then it it basically opened another like you know screen to uh, uh, pro, to it asked me like you know additional information. Okay, so that's the reason they have two. One is pre fact finding, another is basically post fact finding. So I'm just showing you with the 
the latest one and then if you see this is the all xml and this has contains all the questions and answers basically the, there won't be the questions the questions basically map to the rules okay so uh, these are the rule ids from the opa and but the whatever answer we provide let like you see here i provided like you know um, some manager john smith fired me and i was working for 9 to 5 hours so all all this question and answers we will find it here okay and um, there will be a decision like you know th sometimes opa is smart enough to issue a decision so sometimes those decisions will come in here if you see this aff decision okay so this decision like you know is provided by opa then this issue can may not go into adjudication like you know because opa is smart enough to decide but uh, here opa could not decide so that's the reason this uh, this column is blank and the same one is actually mapped here uh, in this table the primary table so there is a column called uh, aff decision so that xml whatever you saw right so that maps to here so since it is blank that means opa was not able to decide what it should do with the issue that means somebody has to manually look into this issue as part of adjudication so guys any question till now santil you want to ask something yeah nikunja what is opa uh, oracle policy administrator it's a tool it's a tool which uh, so where you actually configure all the rules okay and these rules are governed by state so individual states can have their own individual rules okay these are the policies basically and um, and and uh, you will basically put in the rules as part of the configuration and then uh, we are actually invoking those opa um, through some web services and then um, and then like you know this this questions which you are seeing right so those are coming from there and based on your response so the opa has um, like you know some process where like you know it takes your response and then it checks against the policy uh, what the policy and then like you know it, it tries to basically find more additional information and it has a like you know capability to decide the issue also but for our case it could not uh, it, it is not that smart enough so it is asking like since it said like you know i cannot decide so it is going to leave it for some manual intervention that means this issue has to now go to into adjudicator and adjudicator has to look at all the documents to decide yes yeah uh, i just uh, want to uh, it's because of them okay okay yeah, good guys i want you to speak up and ask questions okay it's not that a monologue i am giving okay if you don't follow things i am going fast in the sense because i have to complete things by another 10 minutes i have little more left but you guys can stop me okay if you don't follow anything so nikun the work order uh, uh, number work order where where it will be coming work order uh, that will cover in the next uh, like you know when i give you that so, that is tied to issues but uh, then i i don't want to cover that as part of this so we can take same this issue itself and then we can proceed with the adjudication that time i'll show you uh, where where those things fit in okay so this is okay. i know you guys have already done through these things so you can map things quickly so okay. i want everybody to cover adjudication and then i'll go ahead and do that demo for the database mapping but then th i'll just limit this to here okay okay and if you see here so there is a confirmation number okay which we received as part of claim filing process okay so this you can get it from uh, this table confirmation table and it has the party id uh, so we have the party claimant party id is 9102 okay and uh, you see here the confirmation number is 9145 which is here okay uh and then i uh, we also saw the status was uh, incomplete and it got changed to pending as part of all this process okay so which we can see if we pass in the claim id and to find the claim id yeah 9115 if i pass in the claim id here 
you see earlier it was incomplete and then it got changed to pending and you see this end date so basically this table itself claim status history is the history as well as it actually stores the um, like you know latest record latest status so so earlier it was i was basically one record then we put the end date and then we created this p status p status pertains to pending okay and that's what you see on the screen yeah, now the claim is pending right what are all the steps i need to do uh, to open the claim yeah i'm going there oh okay. you are going there okay so now uh, i'll i'll basically file the wages so this wages filing basically uh, like you know this wages comes from uh, interface but uh, as i said like you know we don't have that uh, implemented here um, so i have to manually add those wages okay so that's why i have this script which i'll use to add the wages okay uh, so i'll so this takes a couple of things so first this takes the ssn which i'll give it here and then it takes uh, the name uh, so what is the claimant name Clement's name was John Mack. And then uh, what was the employer party ID? OK, I go to employer details like separating employer. So this is the party ID. Even here. And uh, so this is this table. Basically, it takes you know right uh, i think somebody was talking about base period so the base period is nothing but it is the uh, last uh, like um, it's the first four of last five quarters so right now we are in the second quarter of 2021 so every quarter is nothing but three months so every year has 12 months so if you divide it by four uh, uh, four you have like sorry three um, so you have four quarters. OK, so right now we are in second quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide uh, last five quarters wages. So I said 2021 second quarter, 2021 like in you know, a first quarter, 2024, three and two. So all five quarters I'm giving the wages. OK, and then I'm saying like and I'm filing for NC. You, um, you can like I think uh, somebody was asking mixed uh, state employment, so they can put in here some other states also. But I'm just trying to be very simple here. OK, so let me run this. OK, it got complete, so then I go in here, so let's verify. OK, let's verify uh, whatever wages I added, right? So. Wages is a table where I actually inserted those records. So you see last five quarters records come in here. Um, and then I'll go ahead and run the 300 batch job. OK. So I go into system administration batch job. And then I go into process monitor and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm going there process monitor. I just want to verify if I ran 100 because 100 basically is going to set the current uh, the batch run date, which is basically today, it will set. And if I see, like, you know, for today's date, I see, like, you know, I ran it earlier. Okay. So that means I don't have to run it. So this this batch of has to run only once. Uh, so since I already ran, so I'm going to go ahead and run the 300, which is monetary uh, batch of. I can select, I can filter it from here, but I know it is here. So, and this basically, if, if you don't provide any parameter, it is going to run uh, for all the claims which are basically, um, uh, which which uh, needs monetary determination, but I don't want it to run forever. So I'll just provide my party ID, okay, which is 9102, this is the claimant ID as the parameter. So it will only run for that, okay, so I run it. OK, when it is running, let me show you something else. We have all our badges in process types. And if I show you, so this is 300 badger. Uh, the name is coming from there, a process monitor request. And then it has all the details. Uh, I think somebody, some of you know this. So this is the bean, basically. This is the Java class, OK, or service. 
which actually um, called monetary batch service and inside this the method basically is uh, calc batch monetary which basically gets called as part when you actually run this so this is the bean uh, this is the class gets in uh, like you know called and from this class this methods get called and domain type b is like uh, this is part of the benefits badge of you see here domain domain is benefit so uh, this domain type b is basically benefits badge of okay and it's a critical badge job that's why it is a critical indicator is there then once this badge job uh, continues and then it finishes or or it is stopped or it has some issues we can go into this uh, process monitor basically to monitor it okay okay it got completed okay and then i click on here to view details okay so these are the details okay but then let me go back i just want to show you some other things before i come to this screen so this is process monitor and it started and ended okay all of these information are also there in the database okay so there is this process history okay so this list down when this batch ran so i actually gave the prcd id as 300 so when this batch ran so it has all the details when till when it ran so today i ran it i ran it today at uh, 9:42 like if this is as part of the their time zone okay and uh, 9:42 which you will see on this screen okay so i think it is converting to the actual india time zone in database it is showing something different okay so but then this record maps basically to the one which is on the first row okay and then uh, I have this process messages. OK, so if I take this ID and go into process messages. So this gives me this like, you know, what are the messages basically? So uh, at certain time the batch started, then it took this parameter as uh, as a uh, like, you know, batch parameter and then it processed. It looked at some OPA rule files to consider and then and then it, it completed. OK. And then if I there is an, another uh, table called process statistics, which I if I query. I get all these things, OK? Uh, so if I go in here. So whatever you see in here. Um, yeah, job is running then like, you know, uh, it process so these are the messages which I was showing you basically on the first table and these are nothing but the second table data. So if you see here number of requests evaluated, so number of requests evaluated. OK, so when the uh, Java like you know function basically uh, processing it, so it, it writes these messages OK and then uh, to the database and this uh, badge of process monitor basically picks it up and displays it. So there are like two um, like you know views okay so there are like more data in here so they have uh, pagination so you can go and see what are the details but but since we just passed one so like you know it has fewer details but then if you run it for the complete set then you might have more details in here okay so since we ran bad job let's see what is the status of the like you know okay it's going through in the meanwhile, I'll show you the status in the table. Uh, and our claim ID was 9115. See, open. So now, since I ran 300 and I have all the wages, so now the claim become open. Okay. And if I go to benefits, claims, and claim details. You see now this is open and this table also has all the history. So initially it started with uh, incomplete, then it became uh, pending, then now finally it is open. Now you can go ahead and like, you know, file your weekly certifications and all on this. OK, so oh, we are on time. So any questions, guys? I know you guys are doing all this process. I just wanted to show you guys this. Uh, how does it map and where? Like you know, what are the details and everything? 
so that like you know next time you guys face some problem let's say while doing the station you find okay some problem you know which table to go and look at it okay see i cannot give you the like in depth analysis of what table what column what what things get stored but then that that you will do as part of your analysis and that's how you will learn but then this is the starting point like you know to look at which table okay i don't want to you guys to struggle to find oh like you know where does the party goes in like you know you don't know what is party you might be looking at like you know okay is there something called claimant some table name claimant no there is nothing like that it is party okay everything is party in the system so okay so this will act as one initial starting point for you guys okay i think i covered uh, everything so i think in the next session we'll take the weekly certification and adjudication but i want you guys to understand those two processes because you guys are been doing this processes it it's it's easier for me to like you know uh, like you know quickly do all these things whatever i'm doing in the screen and then uh, focus more on the database queries to give you more details but then if i if you don't follow those uh, adjudication or weekly certification i cannot explain you like you know uh, what's happening on the screen okay i have to tell you what's happening in the background okay in the back end so okay we'll we'll set up something for next week or maybe next to next week okay i want by the time you should be familiar with uh, adjudication and weekly certification and we'll i'll show you where those those data goes in okay and then uh, in a follow up session we can go to appeals okay uh, or into special programs okay or or as ajira said we can uh, take up something uh, tra or eb okay i can show you those data those are not uh, not way different from those but there could be some additional tables which are involved uh, like you know in those uh, in those special programs okay so any questions anything you didn't understand or uh, like you know you want me to highlight more on certain things yeah let me know okay if not then like you know okay thank you all i think this uh, session is uh, helpful for you guys okay uh, i would like uh, today uh, like you know on monday or whenever you guys do this registration go ahead and run those queries okay if i run these queries i i know this thing so it's not going to help me much but then it is going to help you guys more if you query those tables see the data how it like you know gets stored okay um, like you know and then uh, like there there could be additional columns or something which might be interest of you okay just keep a look at it keep look at it Okay. Hey, uh, Nikunja, can you please uh, stay back for five minutes?